Over $17 billion will be wagered on the Super Bowl this year. This will literally be the biggest betting market ever, which means there's definitely some places that you can take advantage and make some money. Now, whether you're a seasoned sports better or somebody who's betting for the first time, this video was designed to help you. In this video, we're going to be breaking down the 10 best bets and a few others I have my eye on with the goal of helping you make some money and also have fun. And we're going to start with George Kittle over 46 and a half receiving yards. I actually took this one. It opened at 49 and a half and then the number went down and I took it again at 46 and a half. Now, Kittle's obviously going to be playing Kansas City and they use man coverage at a top five rate, which is important for George Kittle because he's been dominating man coverage this year, averaging 22% more yards per game. And not only that, but now Kittle's going to get a matchup against these Kansas City linebackers. And you can see right here, these are all the linebackers in the NFL this season. You can see a couple of Jets linebackers and this is their coverage grade. So against tight ends and coverage, it takes us to scroll all the way outside the top 50 until we get to Drew Tranquil at 57, probably recognize the name, meaning all of the Kansas City linebackers, they'll use three or four in this game rank outside the top 50 in coverage this season now i was asked a really good question on twitter about george kittle and somebody asked you can see right here kp why wasn't he involved last game and i had a couple of reasons for this and of course this isn't all the reasons but this is what came to my mind look success on the outside in that game for the wide receivers in debo and Ayuk against some bad detroit cornerbacks that's one reason they were passing more downfield which was going to Ayuk more since they were trailing and then the big one right here you can see the last point this is just a one game sample sometimes guys have bad games sometimes it's just not their day and other guys are having a lot better games like Adebo Samuel last week and that's where you go it's important to remember that George Kittle was still the number one tight end in efficiency ahead of Travis Kelsey in the regular season this year we won is over and we're also interested now in talking about Christian McCaffrey and I actually want his under five receptions which taking a McCaffrey under might scare you but let me explain obviously this dude is the RB goat right now but he's only topped five receptions in 27 percent of his games and the way to attack Kansas City is on the ground they're actually bottom five in rushing defense this season plus we have Debo Samuel back. He came back last week. You can see he led the team with eight receptions. And with Debo back, that's just going to lead to less check down opportunities and overall target share for McCaffrey like it did last week when even though they were trailing the entire game, McCaffrey only had four catches in the best case scenario when they're trailing having to throw more. And we can take it further than just this one game. If you look since he joined the 49ers, Christian McCaffrey, including the postseason, he's played 22 games with Debo Samuel on the field and averages 4.3 receptions. In 11 without Debo, he's averaging over five catches. So again, Again, this is a larger sample here with Debo on the field. We like the under five catches. But this isn't the only McCaffrey bet that I'm taking in this game because I also like his rush attempts. And it kind of makes sense based off everything we were just saying. If he's not catching the ball because he's taking advantage of a bad run defense, he's probably going to be running the ball more. And we take the over 18 and a half rush attempts. Kansas City allows the seventh most yards before contact. And McCaffrey ranks number one in broken tackles this year, which the translation here is he'll have a nice spot to gain yards before contact and after contact since he's so good at breaking tackles and now in similar spots when McCaffrey's a favorite like he is in this game and faces a bad run defense he averages over 20 carries per game now next up is Kyle Juszczyk and this is from an entry I took earlier this week by the way all the bets I'm taking I've taken as single bets or put them in these prize picks five pick uh, flex plays you can see right here we'll talk about prize picks more in a second but this is one that I took on prize picks the Kyle Juszczyk over uh let's pull down a little bit more over a half of reception you can see right here and now this isn't available as of right now on prize picks anymore but it's available on some other sites so you can take it there it's a very interesting bet and let's discuss first off Juszczyk has been more involved in the offense in the postseason and it makes sense they're trailing in games so he's running more routes he's running about 15 routes per game in the postseason compared to only like seven or eight per game in the regular season almost double and in closer games this season he's more involved maybe one or two deception plays that get him a target he earns 20 percent more snaps and averages 1.7 receptions in close games and as we touched on earlier this game should be closer with just a two-point spread I'm expecting at least one reception for use check in this one and that would cash our bet now let's go to the opposite side here but we're gonna stick with the receptions but instead of going over this time we're gonna go under on this next guy and that next guy is Justin Watson now if you're tuning in you might not know who Justin Watson is if you watch football and play fantasy you do he's a wide receiver he has been somewhat involved the second half of the season but we want his under one and a half receptions and here's why earlier on this year Justin Watson was very much involved and he was one of the best wide receivers on the team but in the second half of the season he has not been that involved and he only has one catch total over the last two playoff games and not only that but Watson's playing time has dropped Marquez Valdez Scantling his teammate is being more involved and it's even more concerning because guys like Kadarius Tony and Sky Moore other wide receivers on this team have been injured and Watson is still not being used which just shows what they think of it and now I want to show you this right here this is from a site called fantasy points they have the overall coverages that defenses use in the San Francisco 49ers this is them ranking third in cover four defense cover four defense is bad news for justin watson he averages 45 percent fewer targets is his worst defense that he goes up against this 
this season against cover four. And that's for the entire season. If you just look at the second half of the year, he's averaging 78% fewer targets against cover four. That is a death sentence. And that's why a major reason why we want the under one and a half catches. And moving on to the next bet, we kind of hinted at this, but his teammate Marquez Valdez Scantling is playing more than him lately. And we're actually going to take his over 18 and a half receiving yards. And you could just see the usage right here for Marquez Valdez Scantling starting in week 19, which is the postseason. He's getting 18 routes run. Okay, nothing great. Then he gets 14 routes, but the team doesn't throw a lot. They only threw 23 times in that game. And then he gets a season high 44 routes. And a route, for those of you that don't know, just means he's literally when the quarterback drops back, he's out there running a route. That's what that is called. 44 was a season high. He got a lot more usage and he had the key catch to ice the game at the end. And the nice thing for MVS is he stays on the field because they could use him anywhere. There's technically three wide receiver positions. There's the slot and then there's the two outside spots, which are technically different based on your role, the X and the Z wide receiver. And I want to pull back up this stat we talked about earlier, San Francisco using a lot of cover four defense. MVS actually runs his most routes against cover four and cover six this year, which are what San Francisco uses the most. So that's good. He should be on the field a lot in this game. We'll take the over 18 and a half yards, which could happen on a guy like MVS used downfield could happen on just one target. Now we're going to switch back to the other side of this one. And we're going to start to talk about the quarterbacks. There's a lot of quarterback plays I like. We haven't gotten into any of them yet, but let's start with San Francisco and their quarterback is Brock Purdy. And we'll look at his rushing yards. And believe it or not, I actually took the under 11 and a half rushing yards. It's now moved up to 12 and a half. So I took it again at 12 and a half because that's a nice spot for us. And let's discuss this. If you look at recency bias, a lot of people like to take the over here because Purdy has topped this number in both of the playoff games so far this postseason. But that's a little bit skewed and some recency bias because he has not topped in the majority of the games this year. And they got down by 16 and 17 in both of those games, which means he was dropping back to pass more in those games more than usual, which opened up some chances for him to scramble. And now if this game stays close, which is expected to with just a two point spread, you're going to see fewer scrambles and rushing yards for Purdy. In similar spots this year of close games, he averages just seven rushing yards. And one more thing, we'll go back to fantasy points here and we're looking at man defenses. And you can see Kansas City ranks sixth in using man coverage this year. When you factor in the postseason, they're actually top five in the percentage of the time they use man coverage. That's good news for Brock Purdy. He averages 55% more production passing against man coverage, which means he shouldn't have to run all that much if he's getting success in the air. That's one bet for the San Francisco quarterback. And now let's talk about the guy. Patrick Mahomes, probably the best player in the world right now. And this one might scare you and shock you, but I'm going under his 260 and a half passing yards, taking his under last week worked, but that's not the only reason why we want this. Look, don't get it twisted. Patrick Mahomes has been the number one graded playoff quarterback, and he has zero turnover worthy plays. He's been great this postseason yet again. And now he's going to take on a 49ers defense, both their secondary and their pass rush that has been just average this postseason. However, this line is inflated by about 15 yards, and here's why. The sports books know that everybody at their Super Bowl parties wants to bet the over, especially on the best quarterback in the league in Mahomes. So there's actually, in my opinion, a built-in edge on the under because of this, and then some other factors, including if you look back at Mahomes' stats since December, including the postseason, going back to Christmas Day, he's only averaging 239 passing yards per game because this team is leaning more on the short passing game, and more importantly, the run with Isaiah Pacheco, even when they haven't been efficient like last week he gets over 20 carries when he wasn't efficient so this is why i want the mahomes under on his passing yards and now actually let's go back to brock purdy i have one more thing to say i've actually taken brock purdy in a couple of different places at different prices over a half an interception in this game and i'll just leave my tweet up to kind of show you why purdy has had a roller coaster of a postseason he's had five interceptable passes which leads the playoffs and again he's only played in two games not three since they had the bye week and he's also had five big time throws which is tied with mahomes for the playoff eye so he has been really good at certain points but it's also been really really bad. He's had three and maybe even four, you can argue, dropped interceptions this postseason. And now he faces the number one postseason secondary in Kansas City and all four of the cornerbacks that they use rank in the top 10 in coverage this postseason. That is not great for Purdy. All right, away from the quarterbacks for a second here and let's go now back to the wide receivers. Rashi Rice, the number one receiver for the Kansas City Chiefs. His receptions are set at six and a half and I actually want the under. Here's why. Look, Rice has been great since about week 12 of the regular season. During this time, he's earned 20% more targets than anybody else on the team and that's including Travis Kelsey. But here's the issue. We go back to fantasy points here, and what you're seeing on the screen right now is yet again San Francisco. They rank third in cover four, like we talked about earlier. And Rice isn't terrible against cover four, but he's not great. He earns 30% fewer targets against cover four, and it's the worst defense that he performs against. Or I should say he performs worst against that type of a defense. And now he takes on the 49ers, who their starting cornerbacks are both top 10 in coverage grades this postseason. So we want the Rice under. And look, I don't think anything's a guaranteed lock. I never try and say that, but this next one I feel pretty 
pretty confident in saying, yeah, it's probably a lock. And that would be Patrick Mahomes over a half a passing yard. And what you're seeing right here is you might be saying, what does this mean? It's a promotion. Look, they want you to sign up for their site, but when doing that, you get this free play right here. Mahomes over a half a passing yard this week. And where is this? It's on prize picks. And now prize picks will actually give you up to $100 to play with for free when you sign up with code SAL23. You can just click the link in the description below, or if it's easier for you, you can scan this QR code on the screen right now to get that free bet up to $100 and also the Mahomes free play. So a little bit of a double whammy here for the Super Bowl. So one more time as a reminder, when you use code SAL23 or scan this QR code right here, you'll get that free bet up to $100 and be able to take advantage of the Mahomes free play. All right, now this next play I just recently added and it's Brandon Ayuk's receiving yards. And I actually want the over here of 62 and a half and let's break it down. Now this might be the best matchup of the entire game. It's gonna be when Brandon Ayuk lines up against the Chiefs number one cornerback in Legereus Sneed. Ayuk ranks top 10 in the entire NFL against man coverage this year, and Sneed ranks top 10 this season in overall coverage. So something's got to give here, but people blow these wide receiver cornerback matchups out of proportion. For the most part, they'll probably only see each other for like 30 to 40% of the snaps, 50% at most. And Brandon Ayuk is so good at man coverage, and he's a monster downfield. We saw this last week with his crazy catch that I think this 62 and a half is at least 10 yards too low. Now, those are all the bets that I've currently taken, but I want to talk about some other options that I'm leaning on or just some more information for some of the popular players that you might be deciding on. And one of those is Travis Kelsey, who is going to be have his line set at 69 and a half receiving yards. He's actually over this in all the postseason games so far. And he'll face the 49ers zone heavy defense that we've talked about a bunch. They're cover four and cover six zones. And he's the best Chiefs receiver or pass catcher against cover four. He averages 25% more yards per game against zone this year. And you probably already know this, but of course he's had a great postseason. And you can see right here on Fantasy Life in the postseason, he's earned 10, six, and 11 targets. Also 11 catches in his last game. That's nine targets targets per game. So let's go from one popular player on the Chiefs to another popular player on the 49ers. And we can analyze Debo Samuel. His yards are set at 57 and a half. He easily went over this last week. I currently don't have a bet in play here, but I just want to give you some information. If you're deciding on it, he'll take on the Chiefs number one postseason secondary. And Kansas City uses man coverage 32% of the time, which is top 10 in the NFL in cover four defense 21% of the time, which is also top 10. And now this is important because Debo Samuel ranks sixth in the entire NFL amongst all receivers against cover four this year in well above average against man. So it's a good spot for him either way. And I also think there's maybe even some value on his under 15 and a half rushing yards as he hasn't been all that involved in the ground. Of course, he can make that look dumb with one crazy good carry, but I think there's some value there. Next up is the Chiefs starting running back Isaiah Pacheco. There's a couple of interesting stats for him here or prop lines. We can talk about his rushing yards. They're set at 67 and a half. And yet again, this week, like he did last week against the Ravens, he's going to be having a difficult matchup because the 49ers rank sixth at tackling and third in yards allowed before contact this year. And not to mention they have some of the best linebackers in the entire NFL against the run, Fred Warner might be the best. Now, I should mention in the postseason, San Francisco's run defense has struggled against the Packers and the Lions, allowing over five yards per carry. Now, another guy here, and he doesn't fall into the popular known category, but this is where you can find a lot of value. And it's Jawan Jennings, the wide receiver three for the 49ers. His receptions are set at one and a half, and I'm leaning on taking the under here. So far this season, Jennings has ran about 60% of his routes out of the slot. So closer to the line of scrimmage or closer to the quarterback out of the slot. And when he's lined up in the slot, he'll probably primarily faced a slot cornerback for the Chiefs in Trent McDuffie. And McDuffie so far this postseason is only allowing 41 total yards per game and ranks top 10 in coverage. So not only is this a tough matchup, but in the biggest game of the year, I think they're going to lean on their superstars a lot more than a guy like Jawan Jennings. So I lean the under here. I haven't taken it yet, but I'm thinking about it. We just covered about a dozen bets that I've taken this week and a few others that I'm looking at. And also just a reminder, go ahead and get that Patrick Mahomes over a half a passing yard and the free bet up to $100 on prize picks using that code SAL23 or the QR code that's been on the screen right over here. Now, a reminder from the beginning of the video, our goal was to help you make some bets, no matter your betting skill level here and have some fun and win some money. That's the ultimate and ideal goal on the Super Bowl. We hope we've done that for you. Best of luck, everybody out there and enjoy all your Super Bowl parties and the game itself.